Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 19th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a little bit as a surprise a set of updates for Apple's operating systems and Safari. Now this was somewhat expected. I actually thought maybe they'll push it uh, for next week because they released another release candidate earlier this week. But well, uh, we got it today. These updates patch about 60 different vulnerabilities three of the vulnerabilities have already been exploited in the wild. And that's, of course, uh, the most interesting part of this update, in particular, the type of vulnerabilities that are being uh, exploited here. The first one, a CVE 2023-32373, is a WebKit vulnerability. So typically, this would be exploited as you visit a malicious web page and it can lead to arbitrary code execution. Now, that code execution would, of course, be constrained by your web browser sandbox. That's where the second vulnerability comes in. And that's CVE 2023-32409. This vulnerability is an issue again with WebKit, but it allows a remote hacker to break out of the web sandbox. So this is how an attacker would then actually start hitting the system. And the third vulnerability is an out of bounds read that uh, does allow the disclosure of sensitive information. Again, a WebKit vulnerability, not half and sure what this refers to. This can sometimes give the attacker hints as to, for example, how to exploit one of these other vulnerabilities. And two of these vulnerabilities were actually the mystery vulnerabilities that were addressed by the rapid uh, update that was released a week or so ago. So even if you installed the rapid security response update, you still have one of these vulnerabilities, and that's the web content sandbox uh, breakout vulnerability. That's the one that was not addressed by that rapid uh, security update. As far as the exploitation in the wild goes, the third update, that's uh, CVE 2023-32409, the uh, sandbox escape uh, vulnerability. It is credited according to Apple to Amnesty International's security lab. They often have written in the past about uh, these sort of state-sponsored high-end commercial spyware tools like uh, Pegasus. So likely that's sort of how these vulnerabilities were exploited. So get it updated. This, of course, is one of those traditional updates. Will take a little bit longer to apply than in last week's uh, rapid security response update. And then I did this morning a quick survey of uh, .zip domains. It's now about a week since uh, they were uh, freely and openly available. I found about 2,700 uh, at the time, and I uh, downloaded the zone files. And these are the domains that were actually reachable. There were about 5,000 in the zone file, but some of them didn't have a DNS or a web server configured. Out of those, uh, about 2,700, I was able uh, to categorize about uh, 2,000. Luckily, nothing too malicious here. A couple suspicious ones, but uh, nothing really that I was able to sort of identify as malicious for certain, of course. Malicious domains and malicious content sometimes tends to be more ephemeral and also heights sometimes from sort of simple scans like this. Lots of rick rolling there, lots of parked domains, and uh, then also some domains that really uh, just uh, returned uh, errors. My overall guidance still kind of stands that uh, .zip top level domains, and I would put .mov in that uh, segment as well, are really not necessary. Don't use them for anything sort of business critical. Assume that people will block the .zip top level domain and well, you should probably just block them yourself. And one vulnerability I sort of uh, missed covering, probably should have covered in Dell Networker, uh, that's the EMC uh, backup product. Uh, 
unauthenticated OS command injection vulnerability that allows executing arbitrary commands in the context of the application. Thanks for much Akash for actually pointing this out to me. And uh, this is certainly something that you need to address. And then we have a vulnerability in the popular password manager KeePass. Uh, this vulnerability allows an attacker to read the master password from the system memory. So in order to exploit this, an attacker would need access uh, to the system's memory, meaning that the attacker does have some kind of malware already running on the system. A patch may be available in June or July. That's sort of the quoted time frame here. It should show up then in version 2.54. There's already the person who actually uh, discovered uh, this issue, Dominic Reichel, uh, did already publish sort of a proof of concept exploit, but also a proof of concept fix. Maybe that'll speed up the actual fix. Uh, not really sure how much faster they'll be able to release it. It's nothing to be kind of super worried about. Again, in order to exploit this, someone needs to have already malware running on the system, which may mean they also could have keystroke loggers and such running on your system. But uh, fix is not yet available from KeePass itself. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. As usual, subscribe, recommend, and leave a good review in your favorite uh, podcast app. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.